a warm welcome to my partner. It's a great thing about being the time doctor. Everybody gets really conscious of their time. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure is always on me though, because if I start late, it's always down to somebody else. But if I finish late, I've mucked the whole day's proceedings up. So straight the way through, so I've got 30 minutes to try and give you some nice hints and tips. Um, I don't spend 30 minutes talking at you. You'll notice a distinct lack of overhead projectors, um, computers and stuff like that. So there's a little bit of interaction needed at various stages during the afternoon. But if you don't want to talk to me, I can use to get away with that meaning yes mic, that meaning no mic, and that meaning get on with it. <laughs> All right, so if we can sort of do that, I can, uh, I, I can sort of keep us going. So just as a starting point, um, I'm going to assume that actually you're here to learn about time management hints, tips and techniques as opposed to learning about my whole life story. All right, so I will just inject things as we go through the, as we go through the day. Um, what I won't make you do is, uh, is I'm not going to make you smell better. Right? Um, uh, I'm not ex-army. Right? I'm now going to really wind those army people up right? because I'm RAF regiment. Right? <laughs> and you will... <laughs> <laughs> and you will notice that I, was not, I didn't say X because as we stand here today um, I'm still very, very heavily involved with the reserves as well so uh, although you might find out later on I think I'm on the verge of getting medically discharged for various reasons so as a, as a sort of starting point for yourselves just very quickly turn to your neighbour and just spend 30 seconds answering the question what is time management? seconds <laughs> okay so who wants to give me a couple of uh, a couple of feelers then so what is time management prioritizing. sorry prioritizing. prioritizing okay yeah so prioritizing certainly comes into it scheduling, scheduling okay so prioritizing scheduling Carol not getting distracted not getting distracted not believe in time management, Mike. It's managing me that counts. Oh, all <laughs> straight to the heart, right? <laughs> yeah, don't believe in time management. It's managing me that counts. Okay, so self-management, self-discipline. Okay, everything from this side of the room so far, with the exception of Carol. What else have we got over here? Okay, back over here. <laughs> <All right. laughs> okay then, so in terms of time management, everything you've all said there is part and parcel of it but it's part and parcel of it. Right? Time management in its simplest terms, if you take nothing else away from today, take this away. Time management is about doing stuff, whatever that stuff is, for the right reasons, at the right time, and in the right way. For the right reasons, because it's linked to goals and objectives. Hi. <laughs> Timing or what? <laughs> eh? So, it's about doing things for the right reasons because it's linked to goals and objectives. It's doing things in the right order because, as the lady said over there, it's prioritised. And it's about doing things in the right way. And that is about doing things in a way that suits you. Suits you as an individual. Prime example of the last one there, how many times have you heard people, maybe not yourselves, but you've heard people say they have problems with their time management, there's not enough hours in the day, they can't get enough done, and somebody says, well, I know exactly what you need to do. What you need to do is you need to make a list of tasks, you need to prioritise it, and you need to crack on with it in priority order. Ever heard that in similar ways? Yeah? to-do lists work but they don't work for everybody yeah they don't work for everybody so let's start off at the beginning so doing things for the right reasons how many of you at the beginning of the year set new year's resolutions or goals for your business hands up everybody uh, right okay a few of you uh, how, how are they going <laughs> 
Yeah, it's doing quite well, right? How many people have got goals for their business? Yeah, and those goals are probably things in terms of um, maybe you want to increase turnover, you want to increase your client base, you want to move into those new offices perhaps. Are they the sort of things that you set goals for? Yeah, a couple of, a couple of nods there. Remember, yes Mike, no Mike, get on with it Mike. Right, um, so from that sort of perspective, everything that you've mentioned there are what I term achievement goals. So these are all things that you say you want to achieve. My next question to my clients all the time when they tell me about their achievement goals is, okay, so that's what you want to achieve, but at what cost? And then they actually look at me quite blankly. So at what cost? Because what a lot of people don't do is they don't think about what I call the preservation goals. So I come across a lot of business owners who are very successful in their businesses, but they look over the shoulders and they've got a lot of collateral damage. And the collateral damage usually takes the form of broken relationships, not getting on with their kids as well as they'd like to, not being there for their kids for those occasions that are special for the children, parents' evenings, school plays, sports days, things like that, because they're always what I eloquently term head down, bum up in their business. Yeah, they're driving forward. So it's not just about achievement goals, but it's all about preservation goals as well. And preservation goals are things that I call the big rocks. You see, at midnight last night, something very special happened to every single person in this room. Even Brad at the back there with his camera. So, at midnight last night, you were given a nice empty vessel. But that empty vessel consisted of 24 hours. 24 hours for you to fill with whatever you wish to do. And what tends to happen, people are busy driving forward with their business, <coughs> and what tends to happen is they fill their empty vessel with lots of stuff. With lots of things going on. So their empty vessel, their 24 hours, is now full and it's full of stuff. It's full of things that you need to do for your business. It's things that you need to do in order to move yourself forward. But unfortunately, there's a load of other stuff that we need in our life. And these are the bigger things. These are things like family, health, hobbies, going to the gym, doing stuff we really enjoy doing. And what we do is we fill our vessel up with all the small stuff first. And unfortunately, we can't always get all the big stuff in. The big stuff is your big rocks. They're the things that are most important to you in your life. When I talk about preservation goals, for me, those preservation goals are, they're, they're those things that you would not jeopardize at all in order to reach your achievement goals. I'm not saying you can't reach those achievement goals, but if we want the work-life balance and everything that we have, we need to say we're probably going to take it a little bit longer. But we'll still have family, friends, relationships, and more importantly, our sanity when we get there. Does that make sense? So, on your tables, on your chairs even, you have a little bit of a, a little bit of a form in front, a little bit of a paperwork in front of you. So just on the back page of the front one. Sorry, yeah, I've got loads of, um... Has everybody got one? No? 
up those yeah. 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 Oh, he said disappearing behind his uh, rapidly made uh, screen. <laughs> Right, there you go. Yeah. So on the back page there you'll see the jug. Can I just uh, yeah, just bottle that one a minute? So just turn to your partner, turn to the person next to you, and just have a natter. What are your big rocks? So what are your preservation goals? 60 seconds just to have that conversation. Ready? Yeah. Go! Okay, ladies and gents, if we can come back into the room. So what sort of things have we got then that are our big rocks or our preservation goals as I call them? What sort of things have we got? Family. Family, all right. Me. Okay, yourself, absolutely, yeah. You know what, that's a really great thing. On aircraft, you know when you hear the uh, cabin crew and they say at the beginning, don't they? In the event of an emergency, in the event of cabin depressurisation, the oxygen mask will fall from above. Put your mask on first before you attempt to help anybody else. That feels really, that sounds, when you just say it like that, it actually sounds quite selfish, doesn't it? However, if you don't look after yourself, how can you look after other people? So when we talk about me and looking after me, a lot of people say that that's actually quite selfish but remember if i'm not good then how can i look after other people okay so great stuff so we've got family we've got me what else personal development personal development okay so personal development personal growth what else hobby hobbies any any hobby in particular matthew uh, well i said mountain biking right okay yep Right, I'm one of those sad people, I've got the running side of things, so uh, yeah, that's it, yeah, for me as well, yeah, okay, brilliant, sorry? My staff, Right, okay, your staff, your workforce, yeah, okay. Right, so all these things now, yeah, they're all the stuff that we've got that are big things. But we've already shown that if we fill our vessel up with the small stuff first of all, a lot of the time, we don't have, we don't have time, and we don't make time for those things that really matter for our families, for our hobbies, for me. It's almost as though it's an afterthought, isn't it? And yet what we should be doing is if we should be taking that vessel and we should be putting the big stuff in, first of all. We should be putting time aside for our families, for me, for our hobbies. How many of you have got a diary with you? Yeah, a few of you? If I opened your diary, I'm not going to make you do this by the way, so you can be perfectly honest. Okay. If I was to open your diary, how many appointments have you got in your diary with yourself? None, but it's your diary. <laughs> and that's the thing, isn't it? It's our diary, but it's filled up with stuff for everybody else. So it's actually not our diary at all, it's everybody else's diary. How often do we make appointments with ourselves? And sometimes it sounds quite callous when I say to clients, look, if you want more time with your family, if you want more time doing hobbies, you've got to make appointments with it. And it sounds cold and it sounds calculated. But for a lot of people, that's what they need to do. So think about making that appointment with yourself. Because once you've done that, then the small stuff gets blown up. Ah! <laughs> the small stuff fills in around the bigger things. So we get room to do everything. Now it might mean that some of the bigger stuff has got some of the smaller stuff has got to go. As a business owner, we try to do everything sometimes. 
So, can we outsource? Can we get other people to do it? Think about, as a business owner, what is the cost of your time versus the value of your time? And I would argue that as a business owner, the value of your time is as a minimum is three times greater than the cost of your time. So when you think about how you spend your time, think about it in terms of the value of your time rather than the cost of your time. I was talking, where's, uh, where, where's uh, you know, Cheryl? I was talking to Cheryl earlier on and we were talking about VAs. I, I'm, I'm blessed, I've got a brilliant VA, she's absolutely awesome. And she does a lot of work for me. Now, I use these figures because I've got them sort of fairly, fairly well sort of squared away upstairs. If you want to take £30,000 out of your business every year, you are saying the cost of your time is about £18 an hour, £150 a day, give or take. The value of your time, if you just work on three times that, the value of your time is £54 an hour. Do you make the best use of the value of your time? As much as the social media marketers in the room and things like that will say how important social media marketing is and, and how we need to get our message out there, do you know what? It's not the best use of my time. So I pay somebody else to do it for me. It needs to be done and I appreciate the importance of it. And I've written over 400 articles on my website and I've got following of about 35,000 people now over social media but it's not the best use of my time. The value of my time is best better placed doing other things. Does that make sense? So think about the value of your time versus the cost of your time. The other thing that people have a tendency to do a lot is, so, so, so those of you, can I just have a show of hands and who uses to-do lists? Yeah, a lot of people. Who uses to-do lists effectively? Oh, just a, yeah, a few people, yeah, that's it, yeah, a few people, okay. Most people, most people have got a list as long as their arm, and they call that their to-do list. Ladies and gents, let me dispel a myth for you. That is not your to-do list. That is a task list, pure and simple. It is nothing more than a list of tasks that at some stage in the future you want to do. I'm not against to-do lists, but what tends to happen with to-do lists, depending on whether you're a left-brained or a right-brained thinker, left-brained people who are nice structured in their thought processes, they love to-do lists. They will also love those things called Gantt charts and project plans and things like that as well. They like order, they like structure. If you look at a left brain thinker's desk, you will find it really nice and tidy. A place for everything, everything in its place. Right brain people, on the other hand, are more creative thinkers, absolutely hate to-do lists. And what happens with to-do lists for right brain thinkers is they'll write a list out and they'll go on their merry way and they'll spend all day being really busy and doing stuff and they feel really good about themselves and then they come back to their list at the end of the day feeling really good and they go, <gasps> I haven't done anything. I haven't done anything on my to-do list. So they do one or two things. The first thing they do is they look at the list and think, right, what can I do really quickly? And they do these tasks really quickly, do a couple of them, tick them off the list, and go, Whew, I've been really busy now, I've ticked some stuff off my to-do list. Or in the worst case scenario, they spend a few minutes, what have I done today? Yeah, I've done that, I've done that, and I've done that. And they add them to the bottom of the list. <laughs> <laughs> and then they tick them off. <laughs> <laughs> been really busy. Go on then, who's guilty? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a few people, well done, thank you for your honesty. Because a lot of the time to-do lists don't work for right-brained people. They're creative. 
they're in and out. They like to jump from one thing to another all the time. If you go to a creative person's desk, a lot of creative people, a lot of right brain people don't have in trays, they have in desks. Right? There's everything all over the top of it. So, how can we make it work for all of us? One of the things that I say all the time is, have an action today list. Your action today list consists of no more than three or four items. And those three or four items are things, they are tasks that either have to be done that day or as a very minimum, they have to be started. So if it's a big project, initially break it down into tasks and it's those smaller tasks that go on the list. So you have three or four things. This is my version of something that was brought out many, many years ago. Its, its original name is the Ivy Lee method. And Ivy Lee is renowned as being one of the very first ever productivity experts. And he was brought in to the, as it was at the time, a company called the Bethlehem Steel Corporation by a gentleman called Charles Schwab. And Charles Schwab said to him, he said, um, the business is doing all right, but what I need to do is I need to, I, I need to have a little bit more order. I need to have a little bit more structure. So he said to Ivy Lee, what can I do? And Ivy Lee said to him, what you need to do, sir, is you need to write down six things on a piece of paper. And then when you come in tomorrow morning, you start on the first one and you do it until it's finished. And then you go on to the second, do it till it's finished, the third. And only when you've done all six, can you go home. When you've got it done yourself, then get your immediate report, your board of directors doing it as well. And Charles Schwab said, yeah, all right, mate, we'll give that a go. Probably not in that sort of language, but you know. He said, yeah, we'll give it a go. And he said to Ivy Lee, what do I owe you for that piece of information? And Ivy Lee said, do it for six months. And at the end of six months, send me a check for what you believe the value of that information is. And it's, the figures vary widely, but it's reported that in six months time, he actually got a check for $250,000. Not bad, is it? Yeah. <laughs> So, Mike's version of it, I actually don't, th I think in this day and age, six is too many things. I think we've got so many curveballs coming at us all the time with technology and things like that. So, three things, four at the very maximum. And you may not get them all done, but you start on the first one and you take it to a point where it's either done or you can't do anything else with it. And in a lot of instances in this day and age, we usually can't do anything else with it because we're waiting for information from somebody else. You know, we're waiting for an input for us to be able to finish it off. So if you get to that point, so you've got that first task, and let's just say you take that to a point where you can't do anything else with it. So then we start on the second task. And we go through the second task until such a time as it's either done, we can't do anything else with it, or we get that information back to complete the first one. Even if you do that, the average business owner works 220 days a year. If you just completed two actions a day, every day for 220 days a year, would that take your business further forward? The last the mistake that a lot of people make is that if they don't finish a task, they put it back on the task list and then it just gets lost again within the task list. So once something comes off your task list, it stays off your task list. So once something comes off it, it stays off it. It goes onto your action today list and it's either completed, which great, off it goes, or we're waiting for the information, so it just goes on to whatever you want to call it, a follow-up list, a waiting list. And then what I do with mine is once a week, I just follow up people to, for the information that I'm waiting for. Three things a day 
allows you to deal with the other curveballs that come in as well without you upsetting your plan too much. It will have an impact, but not a great impact. So just think about what your contingency plans are. So if you're interested, I have another freebie for you, as well as the pens and my bookmarks for my book that I've written and everything on your tables. All right, you're quite welcome to come get one of these as well, which gives you the opportunity here, oh, he said dropping it, to identify your three things. It gives you the opportunity to put in there the people you need to contact and also your follow-up list there as well. A lot of people have said that this really works for them. I know there's actually a couple of people in the room that do use this already. All right, so loads of them at the front here. Feel free to come and get one. The balance of life is really, really important. On the 1st of November 2015, I went into hospital to have what should have been a fairly routine hip replacement operation. The hip replacement was fairly routine. The three heart attacks in 12 weeks afterwards wasn't. And neither was the stroke that followed that. So over a period of 13 weeks, I managed to clock up three heart attacks and because that didn't kill me off, although they tried very hard, right, I also ended up having a stroke as well. I've spoken to a lot of people about this, ladies and gents. And when you have a heart attack or something, it is a death experience, when you lay in your hospital bed at three o'clock in the morning in a pitch black ward, I can tell you hand on heart, you are not thinking, bugger, I never got anything on me to do list done. I can tell you from first hand experience. What I was thinking about, IMAX forces, as I say, I've been involved in the reserves, so uh, I've done tours of Afghanistan, Iraq and everything, and me and, the, uh, me and the Grim Reaper, we came to a bit of a deal a long time ago. Right? When the time comes, it'll make it easy and I won't fight it. But that night, all I was thinking about was, give me one more day so as I can say goodbye to my kids properly. Ladies and gents, you can make a choice as to, I'll use that one, how you fill that vessel up. Time management is a choice. It is about making sure you're doing things for the right reasons, at the right time, and in a way that suits you. You make the choice how you fill that vessel up. Don't make the wrong choices. My name's Mike Gardner, I'm the Time Doctor, and that Fallon is smack on 30 minutes. <laughs>